Hi guys, it's John here again. It is Wednesday, September 29th, 2021. I want to talk about diet and things like that that can influence our energetic sensitivity. I have uh, been a vegetarian on and off for more than three decades. It's actually close. It's actually more like four. Uh, uh, and so I have a lot of experience with this and uh, as somebody who is engaged in uh, many years of spiritual practice of various types, I have a lot of personal experience that I think might be helpful to other people to share about this. Now, I wasn't vegetarian for health reasons per se. I was a vegetarian for just energetic reasons. I had a spiritual teacher uh, early in my 20s uh, that uh, a lot of people might refer to as a guru uh, and that for a period of time I was uh, I was involved with that spiritual teacher and uh, he recommended that uh, we be vegetarian um, not for health reasons but more for energetic reasons and the concept went something like, you know, that the things that we consume uh, alter our consciousness. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people are vegetarian or vegan for health reasons. Um, and uh, um, that wasn't the rationale in my case and never actually has been. Um, so I want to share with you because sometimes, you know, I would be in situations or where I didn't have a lot of time for food or food preparation and things like that. Um, or I w might be, for example, working in circumstances that just made it impossible to, or extremely difficult to maintain being vegetarian. Uh, so that's why I was kind of on and off. But I, so I would say that in the past few decades, well, especially the past decade or past couple decades, uh, I would have been a vegetarian at least 50% of the time. I mean, I think once I was vegetarian for six years straight. Um, now, so I want to share my observations with you on that, um, which are essentially these. Uh, if you're doing spiritual work and you're energetically sensitive, uh, again, just my own personal experience, you, because I found that um, I was much more energetically sensitive when I was vegetarian than I was not. Um, now, in recent, in the past year or so, well, let me step back a little bit. Right now, I'm not strictly vegetarian just because of circumstances make it quite difficult to to be that way because I'm uh, uh, sharing food with other with another person who is not vegetarian, and you know, it it just gets complicated because there's like takeout food and stuff like that sometimes and you know so uh and I feel it um what I feel is when I'm vegetarian for a period of time even a matter of days you I, I will notice a difference in my energy level level I feel clearer and less dense and I feel more high vibration and if I break that pattern, I've had this happen to me many, many times. Like, let's say somebody's like, oh, we're barbecuing and, you know, here's a steak or whatever. Because I'm not, like, extremely strict about it. Um, I would sometimes feel a drop in my energetic sensitivity uh, for a couple days after doing that. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, in fact, whenever I was doing a lot of intense sort of spiritual work, uh, I would, because there have been times in the past where I was doing spiritual work for up to four hours a day, um, and always during those times I was vegetarian. I, I feel like I, I, when I'm doing a lot of spiritual work, you know, the thought of meat and things like that, for example, will actually, I, I will find repulsive. Uh, I just, it, it, it grosses me out, um, especially things like pork or processed meats and things like that, especially are just kind of almost make you feel gross, the thought of even eating them. Uh, and that's just my experience. I would also, so, you know, 
generally, definitely a thumbs up on this from me. Uh, I know it's kind of a, an issue of debate, but it's really simple to find out whether this matters to you or not. All you need to do is just cut out meat for, say, a week. And if you're doing any kind of spiritual work or you're energetically sensitive or uh, y you, you will notice a difference, I believe, you know, in that time frame. And you will notice a difference if you, say, go without meat for a week and then eat it and you pay attention to how you feel. So for me, there's a, in my own personal experience, there's absolutely no question on this issue. And it's, like I said, it's really easy to just find out for yourself whether it matters or makes a difference to you or not. Now, these days, there's also uh, a, an environmental component to this discussion. We know that uh, meat production is a very inefficient way to produce uh, food energy for human beings. And it also has a much higher... Uh, uh, impact on the environment than growing plants does um, and as well you have things like uh, what kind of substances are uh, ingested by the animals that you're eating and what you know things like hormones and things like that there's all kinds of reasons right so uh, since we're on the subject of uh, so to me that's really simple it's very clear and like uh, there's no question in my mind that I am better off energetically if I do not consume meat, none. Uh, now, other things, uh, I find another thing that makes a difference to me energetically is good clean water. Preferably it's not uh, city water where uh, it's heavily chlorinated uh, and running through miles of pipes. Now, obviously that's challenging for people who live in cities, but there are water filtration systems. I don't have one, I've known people who do. Uh, and I've consumed that water, and it um, it's better. Uh, but a good, clean uh, well water, if you can find it or access it, I actually think that makes a really big difference as well. Uh, sugar is uh, something that I find makes me, if I can, you know, because it's tempting to go for sugar, especially if you're hungry and you're not eating enough and stuff. It's like a quick fix. But I find it kind of makes me fuzzy energetically. Like, uh, it's very hard to describe. Uh, but it's, again, it kind of dulls my sensitivity. Uh, caffeine is, all, you know, I'm, I love coffee. So, you know, coffee is a part of my life. But it's, again, I, I find... I'm better off with minimizing it or reducing it. That's not the case right now. <laughs> so right now I'm actually not a vegetarian and I'm drinking too much coffee and uh, I eat probably too much sugar. But just having looking back at like decades of experience, I, I just know that, um, you know, stimulants like caffeine, you know, you get a you get a quick fix. But, you know, like, for example, try and meditate, you know, after cup of coffee or two it's like forget it <laughs> it's impossible you're just too wired right so you want to slow down your energy so that you can be sensitive uh and ca ca caffeine and sugar is just not going to help you do that so eating you know i'm not I, I don't have kind of a puritan ethic about this and i certainly do have never kind of tried to uh impose my philosophy on anybody else uh, I mean, if somebody asks me, I'll tell them, yeah, I've, it's, you know, what I've already just said here. Uh, but I, uh, I'm i not out there uh, trying to convert people to being vegetarian. It's just not something I've ever done or ever would do. Um, uh, so, yeah, water, uh, caffeine, sugar, uh, vegetarian. And just to be clear, I've, I've never been a vegan um, completely. Um I've come pretty close at times, but uh, I'm just talking about mostly just eliminating meat and other sort of low density vibrationally or energetically uh, influencing kind of substances. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, like in my based on my life experience, you know, there's no question about it. Um, it gets more complicated, like when you're dealing with others, like say you have a family and not everybody, you know, wants to do this. Oh, I guess I should also mention things like, uh, processed foods, like fast food and stuff. Like, forget it. It's junk. It's garbage. 
it's not good for you <laughs> you know so um the more natural um the better uh yeah anything else i should throw in here yes i would also th throw in i would also throw my hat in on uh organics as well uh, i think you know minimizing uh, chemicals in our that we take again i'm not like a health fanatic i'm not doing this you know strictly for health reasons I, I was always doing it more for spiritual reasons or energetic reasons and the more that you can reduce the crap that you consume the better you're going to feel and it, you know give it a little time because it can take it can take some time especially if you're if you're coming from say a position where you've sort of been a wide-ranging forager <laughs> and you you're, you want to clean up your diet uh, it may actually, you may actually go through some highs and lows as you shift away from that. So you, it might be something that you want to do uh, gradually or over time. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you become more sensitive, you'll notice shifts in your energy and in your body and in the way you feel almost instantly after you consume certain types of foods. And if you just use that as a guide for what works for you, uh, you'll... Uh, that's all you really need to do. You don't need to really need to listen to what other people say too much about this. Just experiment for yourself and find out. But give it time. Like I said, if you're making a big shift, uh, you know, it might even take several weeks to go from a sort of typical North American diet, for example, into a cleaner diet. Uh, be, you know, because you'll go through, you might go through a period of detoxing, which, which can actually make you feel kind of gross for a while as your body kind of purges a lot of these things. So a lot of these substances are kind of have an addictive quality about them. Uh, so you need to break that cycle. Um, like I said, really simple to do these kinds of things. Just try it uh, for a while and see how you feel and make a note. And, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to do some other videos on practical things, uh, but uh, keeping a journal and, and keeping notes of things I find extremely helpful because sometimes we forget what we already know. Uh, and uh, there's all kinds of really good digital ones now that can sync your phone and your computer. And uh, I use one called Joplin, which is an open source doc uh, and free um, journal. But um, it's uh, it syncs with all my devices and it's open source. Uh, now it's a little bit technical to set up, but yeah, you can actually also have it encrypted as I do. Um, anyway, I'll get into some of that other stuff later. This is mostly just about diet. And uh, like I said, definitely in my case, no question, um, uh, vegetarian or eliminating meat and uh, other substances makes a difference. Uh, some people may be wondering what you would do for four hours a day <laughs> that would be spiritual. Um, well, just, I don't want to, it's a bit of a, it would take quite a bit of time to explain exactly what I was doing during that period of time. And actually, sometimes it was probably even more like five hours a day. But, uh, and for extended periods of time, for months. Um, but that would mean, you know, meditation, uh, you know, rituals, uh, this whole series of rituals that I, I do uh, that and have done that can be quite time consuming, depending on how many you do. Um, kundalini yoga, kriya yoga mantras uh, there was once a, a kundalini yoga kriya that i did for 40 days straight and if you missed a day you had to start over and i had to, this one in particular had to be done before dawn uh, so i would get up very early in the morning every day for 40 days and uh, do this uh, kriya which is a combination of um, mudras mantras and body position so uh, hand movements uh, vocalizations um and uh you know that this is you know i i'm kind of extreme and not everybody has to it's you don't necessarily have to do this but i i had a very powerful experience with doing that and would i do it again absolutely yeah for me that was an incredible experience I, i'm very glad i had uh, now, of course, a lot of people will argue that you don't need to do anything uh, extreme uh, to have spiritual experiences, but um, I've done many of these kinds of things, and uh, basically what 
you can do is there's a lot of ancient techniques uh, that uh, for centuries or thousands of people, thousands of years, people have have found and learned uh, that will sort of invoke certain types of energies or experiences. Um, and, you know, there's no drugs involved or anything like that. There's no uh, outside influence in that way. Uh, so there's a huge library of this kind of knowledge out there. You know, if you're interested in exploring it, I see no harm in doing it. Um, I have gained uh, profound insights. I have uh, shifted my energy permanently. Uh, you can work on karma. You can work on, you know, breaking limitations and barriers. Uh, you know, I'll get into this kind of stuff in more detail later. Uh, but uh, anyway, rambling. So uh, anyway, thanks again for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, I really appreciate it. Have a great day, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.